Good morning, and welcome to worship as we celebrate the epiphany of our Lord Jesus. We don't usually celebrate it on Sunday morning. It's on the 6th of January. Um, in the olden days, <laughs> we would do that, and often that was an ecumenical opportunity. I, uh, I remember the time I preached on epiphany at the Roman Catholic Church in Baldwin Park. I was the first woman ever in their pulpit. Um, but we decided, Richard and I decided that since it was so close to Sunday, we would take the opportunity to celebrate it this day. Make sure you fill out your worship registration cards because that makes Sandy happy. And um, we welcome all to the table of our Lord. It is God's table, and as such, all are welcome. And uh, we've all been here before, I think, but uh, the way we receive communion is I will give you a piece of bread, and uh, David will have a chalice that has magically has two sections in it. The white section is grape juice, and the red section is wine, and you will dip the bread into whichever you would like. And if you just follow the ushers' directions, they'll get you up front. You know, follow the crowd, they'll be fine. <clears throat> I invite you to stand and join in the confession and forgiveness. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the Word made flesh, one life, and our salvation. Amen. Trusting the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior. Let us confess our sin. God of life, you promise good news of great joy for all people and call us to be messengers of your peace. We confess that too often we hoard our joy, our resources, and our security. We nurture conflict and build barriers. We neglect the needs of our neighbors and ignore the groaning of creation. Have mercy on us. When we are self-centered, open our hearts. Where we are reluctant, give us courage. Where we are cynical, restore our trust. Renew us with your grace and give us again the hope of eternal life in you. Amen. Here's the good news. We are children of God and heirs of God's promises through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus, we are forgiven and redeemed. Sing with joy, for all the ends of the earth shall know the salvation of God. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Jerusalem is assured that nations will make a pilgrimage to her because the light of God's presence is in her midst. The bountiful food of the sea and the profits of international trade will come streaming to Jerusalem and thereby declare God's praise. The first reading is from Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the people. But the Lord will rise among you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim, proclaim the praise of the Lord. Word of wisdom, word of life. Thanks be to God. What had been hidden from previous generations is now made known through the gospel ministry of Paul and others. In Christ, both Jews and Gentiles participate in the richness of God's promised salvation. This reading is from Ephesians. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you and how the ministry was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and shares in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ 
and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery, hidden for ages in God, who created all things. So that the church, through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to rulers and authorities in heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. Word of wisdom, word of life. rising and have come to pay homage to him. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. <coughs> Excuse me. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that, had been, that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As I said, we don't normally celebrate Epiphany on a Sunday unless it falls on the 6th. But I think it's important to have this, these readings start off our season after Epiphany. And so Richard and I got together and said, yeah, let's do Epiphany. Ash Wednesday comes very early this year on February 15th and Easter is on March 31st. So our season after Epiphany will be truncated, which every pastor hates. <laughs> Ash Wednesday always comes to Sarah. There is a mysteriousness around these three kings or magi or wise men, whatever we want to call them. They came from the east. They are foreigners. And we don't really know how many there were. We know that there were three gifts, so we always say there were three kings. It could have been a whole entourage of them. But the important part is they were not Jews. They were foreigners. 
And, but they saw the light and followed it. They knew they were being led by that star. Interesting that it took them to Jerusalem first when Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Maybe because Jerusalem was the capital. Jerusalem was where everything religious happened. Whatever. Herod figured out through some allusion to one of the prophets where they were supposed to be was actually Bethlehem. They didn't see any reason not to go to the king and ask him where this child, the future king of the Jews, had been born. Herod realized really fast that he was in trouble if there was a new king of the Jews coming, if Messiah was coming. Herod knew that his reign was uh, not an ethical uh, reign over the people. Herod knew that he was taking advantage of people and reigning for the sake of his own ego. So he was nervous. But he told the Magi, follow that star and go worship the child and then come back to Jerusalem and tell me where he is so I may go and pay him homage. Well, we know that Herod had no interest in paying homage to the new Messiah, the King of Jews. Herod wanted to get rid of that kid. The kings, wise men, magi, figured out there was something wrong with Herod's command. They got it in a dream. Don't go back to Herod. Don't do it. And They obeyed that command. They followed the star, which led them to the child Jesus, to whom they gave gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We never knew exactly what those were besides gold. There's a fun cartoon that has somebody purchasing bars of gold at a table, and it said, people who bought this also bought. <laughs> You've been on Amazon. Frankincense and myrrh. And then Bishop Guy Irwin, our former bishop, shared a cartoon on his Facebook page. Uh, the picture is of a king with a crown at a booth with a sign gift ideas over it. <laughs> and the woman asks him, might I suggest something whose bitter perfume breathes a life of gathering gloom? It's a little more insight into myrrh, doesn't it? <laughs> Sorry. These foreign dignitaries gave precious gifts to the child to whom they had been sent. They knew there was something profound about this little boy. They knew somehow that this was the new king of the Jews. Jesus was probably two years old when they got there. He wasn't an infant anymore. Um, they went to visit a child, not a baby. And uh, they also knew that they simply could not tell Herod where the child was. They knew that he was in danger. So they disappointed, disobeyed the king. And they went home by other, other directions. They broke the law for the sake of justice, for the sake of that child. What came afterwards was horrific. Herod ordered the murder of all boys two years and under in and around Bethlehem. Though the number has been blown way out of proportion throughout history, it was likely uh, about 20 boys uh, and, and plus the for, you know, from Bethlehem and then the few more from the surrounding area. And so maybe it's 25, two years and under boys who were murdered. But that was pretty atrocious that any child would be killed for the ego of the king. 
From the beginning of his life, Jesus was marked for death. And church lore says that these 25 boys were killed for Jesus. The first to die. Epiphany and the season afterwards, after, makes it known that Jesus came not only for the Jews, but for everyone. These were foreigners from the East. They weren't Jews. We don't have any idea what religion these men were. Um, so that's our first notion of it. In our epistle today, Paul says, you know, I'm here for you, you uh, Gentiles should be happy because obviously Jesus came for the Jews and the Gentiles. And you know, Gentiles are anybody who's not Jewish, just in case you're wondering. And Jesus makes that clear by the people that he interacts with in his life, that he's there for everyone. The woman at the well, it was a Samaritan woman, Many people that he healed. He ate with tax collectors and sinners and prostitutes. Jesus didn't care where they came from or what their religion was. He was there for everyone, for all of us. He came in human form so that we might learn how to be human ourselves. Our adult ed class today was about laughter and this author had written about realizing how important laughter was to her when she was invited uh, or being reminded of how important it was she was invited at the end of a conference to go to lunch with some colleagues and her mind said no i need to get home in that two hours i could write a lecture or i could uh, I could grade papers or I could pay some bills. I could, there's so much I could do in two hours. But she decided to go have lunch with her friends. And there were some somber things that they discussed, but they ended up in laughter and joy. And we talked about how important laughter is. I knew it would be a great topic for our adult ed class because everybody here loves to laugh. You know, this is a group of people who know holy hilarity. We understand that God comes to us in all forms. And if we accept that Jesus was truly human, we have to accept that he had a sense of humor. And as I said, I knew God had a sense of humor when I landed in seminary. <laughs> Does the light of the star still shine for us? Does the light of enlightenment still shine for us? I think it does when we are open to it. What epiphanies have you had in your life? One of the first epiphanies I remember having was when I realized that my college major in speech and hearing therapy, had, which had essentially been chosen for me by my sister, um, was not what I wanted to do. I started getting into the major classes in my junior year and I just hated it. I'm like, I don't want to do this. But I, you know, when I went to college, the baby boom was over and there was a glut of elementary teachers. And what did women our age do? We were secretaries, nurses, or teachers. We didn't have other choices. So that was a, an awakening to me. It was like, oh no, what am I going to do now? So I quickly changed my major to secondary speech and theater and had a really good time for the rest of my college education, but wasn't very prepared, very prepared for a job when I got out. I did have a teaching credential, but everybody who was a speech major at least had an English minor and I didn't. But that epiphany of realizing I'm, I'm in a completely wrong place for me was a wonderful thing. Another was when I went to the University of Lutheran Chapel on my college campus. I was raised Methodist, as several of us here were. And I discovered how much I loved singing the liturgy. 
I just felt so at home in the liturgy. It was a comfort I had never felt in church before. And I love the emphasis on the on communion and baptism. And it was like, oh, I've been a Lutheran all my life, but I didn't know it. <laughs> and then the next big epiphany was that I landed one that landed me in seminary. But as I said before, God had to hit me over the head with a two by four each step of the way. As to which Karen says, so you're brain damaged? You're telling us you're brain damaged? <laughs> God hit gently. How is the church still the star for the world? We do not exist just for ourselves. I mean, that's one of the things that really got us in trouble post-World War II. The church became for us. It, people swap, you know, people ran to the church after World War II in part to prove they weren't communist. And um, it became the place where people made connections, business connections, you know. Need a car? Oh, this guy sells cars. Need a mechanic? Oh, here's a great mechanic. He's a member of the congregation. Me a real estate agent, we got one of those. It was a place where you made connections and where you raised your kids together. And we forgot that we were supposed to be a lifeboat station rather than to be a country club. We forgot that coming to church is just a way station along the way, but that we must go out from here and live our faith out. How are we a beacon in the community? I observe that many of you are here because you walked by the church and said, oh, let's try that church out. You know what? I mean, that's a wonderful story of the neighborhood church. Oh, that church is on the island where I live. I think I'll check it out. But how are we light to the world? I think one of the ways we are is that we are clearly here for others. We feed the hungry and clothe them. Karen has two or three carloads worth of stuff in her garage to take to Lutheran Social Services and Thea Esperanza. And we've got a bunch out in the hallway out there. People come and bring their stuff. We donate it. If we go, somebody goes nearly every week, though, you know, we put it off over the holidays, so uh, it catches up. Um, we fed a lot of people with gifts to LSS, financial gifts to LSS. They had their big kids party, Christmas party, and they said, and, and uh, Wendy Rubio uh, said to me, oh, Pastor Ruth, we get to have this wonderful lunch, wonderful dinner for this families." All these people coming because of the money that Gloria Day gave. We gave wow. gift cards for Costco. We didn't get, we didn't get cash. Just sitting in there. We fed a lot of, we feed a lot of hungry people through this church. On this island, let's face it, some incredibly wealthy people. I know there are some of you, many of you here who happen to buy at the right time. You know? Um, but there are a lot of people who moved, who moved in and have these incredibly wealthy, expensive homes who, who don't necessarily care much about anything else. But little Gloria Day here is a beacon, a light to say, help your neighbors. We'll help you serve your neighbors. We'll help you feed the hungry. We'll help you get people housed, because Ella says goes back to it. We'll help this congregation in Southgate, Bay Esperanza, which is all poor people, and all of them are poor, including the pastor. Supported by the Synod, uh, during COVID, they brought in more people. While everybody else was shutting down, they were stepping up feeding the people many of them immigrants. We can be a beacon of love here. We can be a beacon, and I think you are, when new people come in, 
they feel welcome instantly. And um, I love telling the story of my friends, um, Mitch and Pam, who I thought would be back today, they've been traveling. Came my very first Sunday here. I know them from, uh, from the swimming pool, from water lakes. Came my very first Sunday here, and I wanted to get to them to say, stay, for, stay after, they're having lunch. And they came up to me and said, we're, we're staying for lunch because everybody invited us. Well, we have to be open to the epiphanies in our lives. It doesn't matter how old you are. You can always see a new life. You can always see a new way of approaching something. You can always have a new insight. It says, oh, so that's what God wants me to do. Well, oh, I have been treating this person badly. Or, oh, I have a chance here to just be kind and say a few words to this cashier. I have the choice always to spread the love of God in the way that I interact everywhere in the community. May that light of epiphany shine in our lives and continue that, to teach us. We are not old dogs. We are not learning tricks. We are people of God to whom God will always reveal God's self. And we can also always do something new and something more for the people in this world to know the love of Jesus Christ. Amen.
So five years. Oh, I only have four verses there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have six. Maybe I have a different time <laughs> 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 for ourselves, our neighbors, and the world God loves. Humble the hearts of your faithful people that we seek to be servants of your gospel and witness to your mysteries. Give us both the boldness in faith that we make the good news of Christ's birth known to all people. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Establish justice on earth for all its inhabitants. Lead us to protect fragile ecosystems and endangered species. Empower the work of all who research, engineer, and make accessible alternative and renewable sources of energy. Make us careful stewards of your creation. Merciful God. Nations shall come to your light and kings to your dawning. Remove cor corruption a fear from the hearts of leaders and authorities. Lead governments to expand policies and resources that care for refugees and to all migrants. Strengthen the work of rest resettlement agencies, especially Lutheran migration, immigration, and refugee service. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. As the Magi offered gifts to the Christ child, empower us to give generously. Prosper the work of ministry partnerships in our community, especially Lutheran Social Services and Fe y Esperanza. Together, help us share what we have to ensure that our neighbors have enough food, resources, and opportunities. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Defend the cause of all who are in need, all facing poverty, and all who are oppressed, come quickly to those who feel that their lives and livelihoods are fragile. Give them strength and lead them forth with hope. Among ourselves, we pray for Mike Engel, continuing his recovery from hip surgery and RSV, for Marilyn Biddle, suffering from cell cellulitis as a result of her recent fall, for Mike Hornback, Diane Kyle, Ryan Graver, Janet Sims, Nancy Sansom, and all on the prayer wall. For oh, whom else do you pray? Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Abide with us, O God of mercy, and receive our prayers according to your abundant grace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with all of you. Let's greet one another with the sign of God's peace. We will receive our offering.
Please rise. God of abundance, receive and bless these gifts we have offered. Join our hearts with the song of the angels and gather us at your table of celebration. Strengthen us to share with all the world the abundance of your grace upon grace. Pour out in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Amen. justice and harm. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore the sacrifice of his life and death and the victory of his resurrection, we await with all the saints his loving redemption of our suffering world. Send your spirit on these gifts of bread and wine and on all who share in the body and blood of your son. Teach us your mercy and justice, and make all things new in Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Come to the table of peace. You may be seated. Thank you.
You can stay seated while I say this prayer. God, our Redeemer, you have fed us at this table with gifts of grace, truth, and life. As you have gathered us in joy, send us forth as messengers of your peace. Make us shine with the good news of your glory. Pour unto us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Since we didn't have a newsletter this month, I didn't get to write an article and say this to you. I can't thank you enough for all of your Christmas greetings, your exceedingly generous cash gift to me, your notes, your cards, and other gifts. You made it a really wonderful Christmas, and I enjoyed it so much with all of you. So I just wanted to thank you for all of that. You are gracious and kind people. Now, please stand and receive God's blessing. God bless you and keep you. Jesus grant you grace and truth. And the Spirit send peace upon your hearts, now and forever. Amen. other to love and serve your neighbor. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.